sorry, he isn't available just now. Uh, well, hang on. Let me get a pencil here. Do you think this handbag's all right to go Mama, with the be quiet. I am on the phone. Hello? Yes, uh-huh. Who is this? Bill Drysdale? The Bill Drysdale from the Raytown Star? Well, my goodness, I read your column just every single day. <laughs> well, well, yes, yes, it is kind of exciting having a famous writer for a brother. <laughs> but actually, you know, writing just kind of runs in our family. Matter of fact, Mr. Drysdale, when I was in high school, I wrote a lot of poems, and all my teachers you said that they... You gonna recite them to the man, Eunice? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> anyway, like I was... Pardon me? Oh, oh, no, no. Uh, it, it's today that he receives his honorary degree from the university, and it's tomorrow that he is lunching with the mayor. <laughs> anyway, like I was telling you about my poems in high school... <laughs> makes you think that reporter is interested in some silly old poems you wrote in high school? Mama, for your information, I got B-pluses on all my poems in high school. And also, reporters are always interested in a celebrity's family. I mean, my goodness, you can't even pick up a magazine article nowadays about Warren Beatty without reading something about Shirley MacLaine being mentioned in all of the place. What the hell does Shirley MacLaine got to do with Warren Beatty? Mama, what planet did you come from? <laughs> Shirley MacLaine happens to be Warren Beatty's sister. Well, I do not fill my mind up with that sort of junk. Anyway, you comparing yourself to Shirley MacLaine? Well, all right, maybe she had a few more breaks than I did. But the point <laughs> is, people are always interested in a celebrity's family. Well, I wish that celebrity of ours would get out of the bathroom so as I can do something with this hair of mine. <laughs> Bathroom's all clear, Mama. I hope I didn't hold you up. Not at all, sweet baby angel. Hmm. You know, I could have saved you all out of bother if you let me stay at a hotel last night. Oh, shoot, Phil. Do you think I'd let you come into town and stay in a hotel? Naturally, I want you to stay here in my home with me. <laughs> Philip, you are gonna wear a tie, aren't you? No, no, Mama. This is more than adequate. It isn't formal. Say, hon, look, uh, there were some notes here on this speech that I was going to make this afternoon. Philip, I have been trying to tidy up after you. Why don't you just look in the trash under the sink, honey? Oh, sure. <laughs> here we are. Just what exactly is it you're doing these days for a living? Well, Mama, I'm, I'm glad you're interested. See, I, I may be writing a movie script soon based on my last book. Oh, but that's still in negotiations. Then I'm planning this book on the political situation in South Africa. what the hell are these chewing gum wrappers doing in my purse? Well, how should I know? Because you put them in here the night you borrowed my purse to go to that party with that trashy Mary Beth Pickett. Well, if you knew that, then why did you bother to ask? I'm glad you're here to see what I have to take. So anyway, why are they giving you the runaround on that movie, darling? Oh, well, Mama, there's uh, casting problems, money to be raised. Do you want any more prizes? No. Uh, just a Pulitzer Prize and the Nobel Peace Prize for that book on India. Well, now, you can't coast on them forever, baby. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm not really, Mama. I mean, I am working on that political book, you know, South Africa. And, and then my business yes, manager, maybe he's I worked out an in investment that program and work that will on make my me hair now that you're out of here. Philip, let me give you a little hint. Mm. Mama's gonna be in there for three whole days working on her hair if you don't say something nice about it when she comes out. You know how she is about that hair of hers. I will, Eunice. And try to act like you mean it. I will, Eunice, I will. Oh, by the way, while you were dawdling in the bathroom, you got a couple of messages here. One is from Bill Drysdale. He writes on the Raytown Star, and he wants to interview you. And I, I think mm -hmm. it'd be a real good idea if you kind of asked him to do a family piece, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, the other was from a Max Frobisker. Oh, Frobisher. He's the movie producer that may make the film of my latest book. Ah. It is the first fictional thriller I've ever written. And Frobisher seems to think it's the sort of drama that will appeal to, oh, people of all ages, you know? Drama? <laughs> Honey, you 
you want drama? You should have been around here last Easter when I hid Easter eggs for my boys, Bubba and Raymond. Well, they came down and they was looking for them Easter eggs. Now, wouldn't you know, Bubba found eight Easter eggs and Raymond only found seven. Well, I thought I was gonna die. You never heard such carrying on. Raymond's having a hissy fit saying, Bubba's got eight and I only got seven. Bubba's got eight and I only got seven. And I swore I hid 16 eggs. We looked high and low all over this place and we just couldn't find them. So you know what I had to do? I had to go into that kitchen. I had to hard boil me another egg. I dyed it purple and I hid it just so Raymond could find it. Found it everything was just fine. But you know, today I know that somewhere in this house there's a rotten Easter egg. <laughs> Maybe I can work that into the film. You do that, it'd be good. <laughs> Thank you for the messages, Eunice. I am sorry to be a bother. Oh, shoot, I don't mind. It's kind of fun taking messages. It made me feel sort of like a secretary. Yeah, you'd make a really good one. You mean that? Mean what? Uh, what you just said about me making a good secretary. Oh, yes, sir. you could probably learn too, yeah. Oh, Phil, wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't it be fun? Your own sister being your secretary? But you don't type, do you, Why Eunice? So? We'll just send it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, oh, Eunice, I don't know. I, I've already got a secretary. She's a very good one. I mean, she's been with me for a good many years. Mm. Go and ask me, go and ask me, go and ask me, go and ask me. I can't do a darn thing with my hair, and I ain't going to humiliate my son by going out in public in this stringy mop. Stringy mom, why, Mama, it looks like you just came from the beauty parlor. Oh, for Pete's sake, Philip, instead of dropping out of thin air once every five years to humor me about my hair, you'd think you'd look in the mirror and think about getting a decent haircut yourself. Mama, <laughs> uh, uh, it's gonna be all right. All you have to do is just rat it up a little like you usually do. Mama, I want you to be there. And afterwards, I want you to go and go through that library with me, the one they're naming after me. All right, all right, but we're gonna have to leave early enough so we can stop by Aunt Celia's on the way. We are going to Aunt Celia's now, but, but, but Mama, look, I've got a lot of notes to make on, 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 on the speech. We I... are only going to Celia's so you can visit with her. Mama, I do not have this kind of time. Well, fine, Philip. Just drop into town and disrupt everybody's life and then leave hurt feelings behind you. Okay. okay. <laughs> we, we, we will visit Aunt Celia to prevent her suicide oh, oh, only tomorrow after luncheon with the mayor. All right. Oh, one more thing, Philip, before I forget it. Will you tell the mayor to do something about all them stray dogs that are running around the neighborhood? That crazy Miss Skinner across the street lets her hound out every morning, and on trash day, he comes right over to my side of the street, he tears right into my trash bags, and he strews garbage all over the place, and you tell him I'm sick and tired of it. Yes, Mama, I will, and I'm sure he'll get right to all work on it. Right, if we are going, come on, let's go, because I gotta stop by the store and get me some more shoe polish to finish up this shoe you I ran out. You Philip does not have this kind of time. Now, you just keep your feet together. Ain't nobody ever gonna see the dirty part of that shoe. <laughs> Fine, let's have it Phillip's way. We always have it Phillip's way. <laughs> Probably doesn't even want us to come see him get his little precious degree anyhow. Probably ashamed of us. Oh, Eunice, I don't know how you can even think that. Well, brother must be ashamed of his sister or else he'd say, why not? When she offered to be his secretary. Oh, but I... But no, no, I guess I just can't live up to your standards, can I, Philip? <laughs> you have been lording that over me all of my life. I remember when, when we was kids, he used to say, Eunice, it isn't lie down on the couch, it's lay down on the couch. Actually, it is the opposite. <laughs> lie down, lie down, lie down, lie down. Why do I see my hair? Oh, Pete's like, Eunice, why the hell are you pestering this poor boy to help you with these pipe dreams of yours? Pipe dreams? <laughs> Every time I've had a dream, it's been a pipe dream to you. But when little Philip comes to you and, and he says, Mama, Mama, I want to be a painter. You said, here, precious darling, here's a paint kit. And then when he comes to you and he says, Mama, I want to be a writer. You said, here, precious darling, here's a typewriter. But when I come to you and I say, I want to be a ballerina, I just get the horse laugh from you. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and who was the first one you always tucked in at night when we was kids? Wasn't me. Uh-uh, no boy, howdy. It was that little precious stuck-up persnickety Philip. 
Actually, I do think it really would be better if I did stay at a hotel. Oh, well, thank you very much, Philip. After I have spent three whole days down on my hands and knees scrubbing this place from top to bottom for your visit. Now, wait just a minute here, old lady. <laughs> Don't you take all the credit. Oh, well, excuse me. Excuse me, little missy. You just gave the top of the TV over there licking a promise with a wet handy wipe. And also... <laughs> Little Missy Eunice cleaned out that hall closet so he could put his Hollywood duds in it. And Little Missy Eunice stood in the grocery store line for a whole hour buying expensive frozen TV dinners that he hadn't even bothered to eat. And Little Missy Eunice put up with you sitting by her on that freeway moaning and groaning and gasping all the way to and from that godforsaken airport. And now, you won't even take any time to let me go out and get some shoe polish. Oh, well, it'll be fine. Look, now, I'll just call a cab. Call a cab to the university! <laughs> call a helicopter for all I care! I'm not going to force my loved ones into having a friendly little visit. Eunice, this man obviously came home to be alone, so let us leave him be. Oh, no, no, Mama, Mama, wait a minute. Look, maybe it would be better if I went with you now, huh? I... Now, I don't want to force anybody to do anything. <laughs> now, I want to go with you. I'd like to go with you. Is that all right? All right. But hurry up and get your little old silly papers. We got a lot of stop to make. Oh, yes, Mama, right away. Right anyway. Right away. Well, here's a shirt and tie of Raymond's. You can just slip that on in the car. It's probably going to be a little bit small, so you have to keep your jacket buttoned. Mama, look, I spoke to the president of the university. Do I have to get back that... talk every time I open my mouth? Don't I get enough of it from your sister here? Now, don't you include me in on this or he's gonna know how much hell you've been putting me through ever since you moved in on me. Lord! <laughs> Philip, I can't understand why you don't come by and visit us more often. 